it's April 13th, 2014. And yesterday my husband and I drove into the Klamath River to get hazel sticks for my baskets. So I have a bunch of them right here. You can see that the leaves are just starting to come out, but not far enough that they've started putting out new branches. So it's early this year. Typically it's early to mid-May when we're getting our hazel sticks high up in the mountains. But with the dry season that we had this year, the willow and the hazel have come on very early. The willow went so fast that I barely got any this year. So anyway, I've got lots of different sizes here. Big ones, little ones, medium ones. Um, I was hoping to get lots of long, skinny, straight weaving sticks this year, but I got a mix, as usual. So, um, hazel is a much more crooked stick than willow is. You can see all those bends and curves, but it's a very strong and pliable stick. It's good for utilitarian baskets, baby baskets, burden baskets, jump dance baskets. I soak it, keep it wet in water, just like with willow, because if it dries out, then you can't strip the bark off. And I'm just going to be sitting here and stripping as I'm talking. You notice I have my hazel submerged in a big tub. The whole stick is submerged. Usually you just stick it in a bucket, to, you know, the butt end in a bucket and then fill the bucket up three quarters with water and the top of the stick stays out and that works fine. But I had so much hazel that it was just easier for me to put it in a bucket or in a, the big tub this time. I won't leave it there for too long, maybe three or four days, otherwise the water starts getting yucky and um, you know, mildewy. So I'll probably in about three or four days, whatever's left, I will. Here's a nice big bendy one, but once you weave with it, all those bends you weave out, it's just such a nice, strong, pliable stick. It's really wonderful to weave with. You can almost feel the elasticity in it when you're weaving with it. But um, in about three or four days, I will, whatever is left, what I haven't completed stripping the bark off yet, I'll take it out of the water and stick them in buckets and, and um, continue on. The amount of hazel that I got, I'm expecting, uh, it'll probably take me a week, maybe a week and a half to get done. I won't work on it you know, all day, but I'll probably two or three hours a day. I'll be stripping, and at about that time, my hands start to wear out, and I just need to give them a break. The other thing that you'll notice is I have a towel over the top of the hazel, and the reason I do that is just that a lot of times the top sticks like to pop up out of the water, and then they dry out, and I just found that when I'm soaking my material, waiting to process it, if I keep a towel over the top, it it uh, keeps everything nice and moist on the top. Also, um, I'm wearing gloves, which is crucial for me. <laughs> Otherwise, I use my fingernails too much, and my hands just start looking really bad. And I do my daytime job. I work with the public, and um, this just protects my hands. Plus, I really like these little lightweight gardening gloves. They're kind of rubbery and sticky, so they'll kind of catch the material. And anyway, I've just learned to do that, and by wearing the gloves, I've forced myself to not use my fingernails, and which is very tempting. Now, that's a nice big stick. Curvy, but once it's you weave with it, it straightens out. There's a medium-sized stick. A little straighter. 
So we gathered in a, a, a place down the Klamath River in the mountains, in a place that had been burned a couple summers ago, not this last summer, but the summer before last. So that's where you want to get your hazel, is where there's been a forest fire in the last year or two years. Then the sticks are much straighter. Old hazel bushes, sticks are really crooked and branched and not usable for making baskets. There's also, where there's hazel, there is poison oak. And for anyone who is allergic, you know how miserable poison oak can be. I'm highly allergic. Probably crazy that I go out and get hazel sticks for my basket. But I, I take precautions. I always bring a spare pair of clothes and take a shower with Technu. And I also know there's a nice little one. I also have recently, in the last couple of years, learned about a, hopefully a preventative for poison oak. It's a natural product. It's called liquid certopectin. It's C-E-R-T-O. And you buy it right in the grocery store, the jam supplies. It's liquid, not the powder. And you take that, if you know you're going to be exposed to poison oak, you can take it as a preventative for a week or so before you're going to be out in it. You take a teaspoon a day and a glass of juice. If you get the poison oak, it helps to clear it up quicker. And then you would take um, a couple teaspoons, maybe a tablespoon a day. And uh, I've been doing that the last couple of years. And knock on wood, it seems to be working. So I'm hoping that that'll be true again this year because we were in the poison oak pretty thick. It, because there was a burn, they weren't big plants, but there was, there was ground cover. And oftentimes you get to working on a bush and flipping away and all of a sudden you realize, oh, there's all these little poison oak sprigs coming up alongside of your, your hazel stick. So just as a precaution, um, to know that where there's hazel, there's also poison oak. Hazel does not peel as easily as willow will. But this is still peeling fairly well. Once you get a bundle done, you want to twist your sticks, which I really find the gloves helpful for this too, because this is also seems to be hard on my hands. But you get a few, and you take the sticks, and you just twist them. You do this with wo the willow too, and what it does is it just breaks the fibers down inside the stick so that when you start to weave with it, they bend a little easier. And then I'll leave them, the stick laying out in the sun for a couple days just to dry. And right now, as I'm peeling, I'm kind of pre-sorting. You know, big, medium, little more diameter than length, although usually the bigger the diameter, the longer the stick. But um, let's do this butt here. But I find having the gloves on really helps me get a grip. And it's a little less stressful on the hands. It takes a lot of strength in your hands being a basket weaver. There we go. That's a little 
one. I saved the big ones and let my husband twist those. They're just way too hard on my hands. My basket weaving teacher taught me to use a baby diaper changing pad on my lap so that it protects your clothing from the water and even when I'm weaving I use that. It's really nice. Another big stick. These sticks here are too big for me to weave with, but what they're nice for is when you make the seat in a baby basket, you split them down and then use them for making the seat. You can just like cut the top, split it down like you would split root down. One peeled off pretty nice. When I speak of the weavers, I'm talking about the smaller sticks that will be used to weave the windy day here in Southern Oregon. Um, yeah, the, this would be a good weaver. Small and straight, and they're the sticks that you'll use to hold your, weave your bigger sticks together. You need, when you make a basket, you need hundreds and hundreds of those. Once, um, I get the sticks all cleaned and pre-sorted, dried, I'll go ahead and fine sort them, because when you make a basket, your sticks all need to be as close to the same size as absolutely possible. That's what makes a pretty basket. And so once you get that all done, you realize Mother Nature doesn't make too many of the same size sticks, so you have to gather a lot to be able to get enough for making a basket with all the same size sticks. These are peeling real nice. There's a beautiful hazel stick. Like I say, I'll probably work on this for a couple hours and then I'll give myself a break, go do some other things and give my hands a rest. So it's a beautiful day for sitting outside and peeling hazel. As you can see, it takes hours and hours of not only gathering materials to make a basket, but also your processing of your materials, sorting of your materials before you can even begin to start a basket. It's definitely a labor of love. wonderful thing happened to me yesterday when we were out gathering. We were gathering with a group of Klamath River basket weavers and so 
somebody who I'd best believer I'd never met before came up to me and said, I want to thank you very much for your blog. We have learned so much from it. I was just um, overjoyed. It made me so happy. And she said, uh, my nieces and I, we, we've learned so much from your blog. We really, really appreciate it. So that is very rewarding.